What's up guys, we're uh, here in Grand Rapids. We're, uh, we had an event last night over at Grand Valley Sporting Goods. Uh, thanks again to those guys for having us out. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, but since I'm over this way, I thought I'd try and take advantage of uh, the opportunity to get out on the river. We, um, there's a spot we, we've fished for a long time, but we haven't been there in a long time. And uh, usually, it's pretty stacked up with steelhead this time of year. Uh, the lake was supposed to flip last last week. I don't know if it actually did or not, but um, it was supposed to. And then we got all that rain, so so hopefully that brought some fish into the river. I don't know if it did. I haven't, I haven't heard anything. Um, so uh, anyway, we'll, we'll uh, hope for the best and see what happens. Jake and Kev are supposed to meet me. Um, so we'll see if they uh, end up showing up we had a late night last night so um, anyway we'll see what happens and the mosquitoes are already swarming sprayed everything down with permethrin deet of course and the mosquitoes are bad We do this river stuff, a lot of the times we're using a, uh, a switch rod and then um, just a fly reel on here with some floating line. And that allows us to uh, run an indicator setup, which I'll show you when we get down there. Um, it's a pretty effective setup. We've been running this setup for a long time. We'll either use this or, or sometimes on bigger water. This is a, a smaller river we're fishing today, but on bigger water we'll use a, uh, a center pin reel if we need to um, get a little bit more distance on our floats. But um, it's fun to use a switch rod and fly line because you can, um, well, first of all, you get to mend and, and it's, it's beneficial too because you can control your drift a little bit more if you have the ability to mend. Uh, but a center, a center pin allows you to control that drift better at distance. So. Um, we're fishing the Grand River or something like that. Um, we'll, we'll sometimes go to a center pin. Oh, look who we got pulling up here. There he is, even beat Kev here. Surprising. There he is. God, I'm proud of you. I got McDonald's. Really? Bug spray. Oh. We haven't fished like this in a long time. Yeah, I hope those mosquitoes aren't too bad. I'm sure they're gonna be horrible. <laughs> I brought some permethrin we can just spray the hell out of there. Have them just get that off. Definitely look for that floating line. I think it's gotta be some re-rigging going on here. Are you just hoping for the best with that? This one guy must have taken it off two years ago. A little bit of a mystery line here. Oh yeah, that's the right line. This line's got the indicator tip on it right there. <coughs> we'll show you that when we get down there. Those, the old waders or something? Yeah, I found these. <laughs> They're a little tight. <laughs> I'm still with these. Just hole in the crotch. <laughs> uh, the water's low, so it'll be fine. Small technical difficulty over here. We're missing wading boots. Is that better? Yeah. They're going to be grippier too than these. Those are his flat, those are his flats boots. The wading feet won't fit for some reason. Which is weird. Alright, you ready? Alright, let's, let's do this. It's probably been what, like five years since we've been here? If you were a betting man, what would you say our odds are this morning? If there's fish, 100%. Wow. That's pretty good. It might be a little early. We got a lot of rain last week, though. The lake was supposed to flip. I'm going to walk in the water because all that poison ivy. Oh, 
Oh, look at all that. That's not good. We better hit one fast. We're gonna run some indicator setups. I've got an 11.6 switch rod right here. And Jake, what do you got? Is that your nine foot fly rod? Yeah, it's he's nine foot eight weight. He's got a nine Setting foot. it up with indicator. He's got a cool indicator line on here from Rio and he's got a center pin here too. This has an indicator tip on it. That bright orange tip, which is nice. You don't, I mean, we're gonna run an indicator on here, so it's kind of pointless, but for trout it's nice because you don't necessarily need to run a uh, an indicator or a little bobber on there. about a 10 foot leader to start off the fly line. Tie perfection loop on here so you can do a loop to loop connection. Got any extra bobbers? Yeah. You ready for one right now? Oh. Oh, you just meant in general? Yeah, yeah I got them. And you can do your loop to loop connection. Indicator. Got these little rubber stoppers that keep it in place. First mosquito bite. Let's just hold it in place and then you can slide this up and down depending on the depth. Go to a little micro swivel. These are from uh, Raven. And then on this tag end, we can tie a little knot on here because I'm going to put my splits on here. I'll tie a little knot so they don't fall off of there. And then from here we can go down to our uh, tippet. I'm going to use a little, it uh, oh, looks like I'm, do you have any 4X tippet? Or 6 pound? Mm -hmm. Oh, is it Maxima? That's alright, I'll use this. I'm going to use some 5X. Oh yeah, can I steal some of that? Thanks. Here's a 4x tippet, just about six pounds. It's usually good here. Water's kind of colored up though. You need some 2x. Good. Hey, better. 8.7 pounds. I'll probably regret this here in a little bit. I'm, I'm using 2x for my measurement. <laughs> usually do about an arm, arm to your sternum on this. Thanks. And I'm going to throw a bead on here. Usually like orange or pink here. So you can take this, take your bead and thread it on your leader. This is that 4X tippet. 
and then tie a hook down below that. What are these size, do we like size 8 hooks? 10. Size 10 hooks. I think these are from Raven too. And we can take one of these little rubber stoppers here, it's tapered, so you can put this into the bead, just like that. Pull it tight, that's too small. Try that again. So it's tapered, so you can just pull it through until it's tight. And you can just trim off the ends here with a little pair of clippers. I don't know if I've ever thrown a bead with scans before. I don't know if we go that traditional I don't know, the best bead I've used here was, uh, it's like a pink one that I don't, well, I guess I do kind of have it. It's kind of like this. You want one? Yeah. He's going to throw that one on. And so you can change the distance between your hook and your bead. So you want this to be just about three fingers from the hook. The last thing we need to do is just put some split shot on here. A lot of times we'll use spawn or shrimp. Believe it or not, cooked shrimp, they like the orange tails. So I'll usually run two on my tag end here and then I'll run three splits up above that. Alright, so we're set up, we got indicator up top, onto a micro swivel with some uh, split shot on the, on the tag end, and then down to a, we're going to try a bead first, we might switch to a, some flies, but the beads are usually most productive. Nice, that's what you got to do. I'm about probably four feet too deep. This spot's pretty cool. They like it because there's a creek that dumps down into this big hole. And this, this is the Jake's fishing the run above the hole right now. But early in the day, they sit up here when they're feeding. And they move down there. It gets really deep. Right at that tree there right after that it drops down to I don't know almost 10 feet so it's a big hole and then the drift is dead yeah hit one rock I need more weight Oh, well, it drops off so fast down there. They're in here, they usually sit right in that bubble line right out there. Oops. Right there. We can give it like another half hour here, we can move up to that other, that other spot. I feel like the bite's usually a little, a little later in the morning. If there is one. Oh. That would have been nice. Try to get a little between the eyes. <laughs> Cross their eyes, as Kev would say. On to the next spot. I think the next spot will be even better. I hope this so. spot was killer. The water's really, really warm today. You gotta find some 
some colder stuff. If there's fish alive, they're going to be in some colder water. You're just a skinny mini these days, Jake. Well, we had a late arrival. Yeah. Howdy, howdy. If there's fish here, he's going to find them. Slow, Not yet. It was slow this morning. The water is so warm. I don't remember it being this warm like this. Yeah. Definitely doesn't help. On to the next spot. We're looking for some creeks. Need to find some cold water. Should I not try to get it close to the tree? It's like hard to, to cast this thing when it's warm out. It's like lines stick to your usually your hands are nice and chapped. Yeah. In the cold of February. Well, that's why you hooked it. <laughs> At least get a good look at it here. Yeah, I know. I think you got a brown. Way exciting. Real nice brown, dude. Real nice brown. Got the one scam that was alive. <laughs> I hope, uh, you got a landing glove or anything? No. You're going to have to land them because I can't see film. Oh, splash the camera. You can sure tell the water's warm.
Yeah, I don't think we can get him to come up though that far. Switched over to four pound test, so I'm uh, <laughs> a little nervous about popping. Speed. Carefully aligned on that rock. There you go. Swing him. All that. A lot of work for a little guy, but we'll take it. This isn't the best footage. <laughs> nice little there scam. Is. Of course, I, uh, it happens when I leave my landing glove up in the truck. We have a stringer. <laughs> have a good one. I've got a stringer. You don't think he's gonna survive? Maybe he will. I don't know. <laughs> he might. I mean, it's a lot colder up here, but it's pretty gas. like a deer hunt trying to find that thing. God, <laughs> never worked so hard for a fish in my life. You're right though, moved up river, found some colder water. It's a lot colder up here. We don't have a thermometer, but you can definitely easily feel it with your hands, so. Yeah, it's like 10 degrees col colder yep. up here. It's weird. Yeah. I guess it makes sense, but. There's a little creek up here on the left. Not a big one, but about that wide and dumping some cold water in here. That, that's what it wants, I guess. Yeah. Work. All right, let's hit another one.